10 million dollars to be delivered by detective first grade Raymond Vecchio of the Chicago Police Department. This train is now a trigger mechanism for an imminent nuclear meltdown. This train is a runaway. This train is a runaway. Well, it turns out I'm kind of greedy, so you won't be coming along. Just you and me now, Inspector Thatcher. We got the dragon lead. Hit the brakes! Got a visitor. Well, then, there now. I'm handling my own defense. So, it's that no account lawyer, you can feed him with the pigs while his bones are still soft. It's your brother. Ah. Different story, morning glory. You need a haircut, Randall? Well, at least I still got most of mine, though. Don't start. But my hairdo is the least of my problems. Don't let hygiene take a back I'm seat. I'm incarcerated. It's important, here, Francis. Randall. I could be facing lethal injection. Isn't that right? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, you don't think so? Oh, I got a hanging judge out there. You don't think he's filling up that big needle right now, getting ready to send me off to no. my final reward? No, what? I don't. And why is that, Francis? Because the family would never permit it. The family? As you know, the family is dedicated to your cause. Even now, we're preparing a care package for the day of your trial. Planning for the possibility there might be some waiting involved. What about the cousins? Are they still behind us? Yes, they always have been. You recall the games we used to play in Uncle Jimmy's mortuary? Go, Randall. They were dead. Let them go, I say. <laughs> Think instead of Dracula. Dracula? Exactly. So you mean... <laughs> you mean the time the... The time the cousins hid themselves in the coffin? <laughs> and, and Vernon suffered his first asthma attack. <laughs> How is his asthma, by the way? Well, he still suffers. 
but he's discovered the attacks are bearable if he has a knife in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> what about Gabe? He and Ian Bird so close? Like peas in a pot. Of course, Gabe still has his problems. It seems that on occasion he finds himself incapable of resisting the urge to get loaded. And lately he's developed a taste for things that are somewhat more... Explosive. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> this news uh, about the family, it's, uh, it's very encouraging, Francis. Very encouraging. Encouragement is what I need right now. I mean, because I have been having a devil of a time in here. <laughs> right, fellas? <laughs> it's interesting that you should mention the devil. Our father was at the pulpit last Sunday. God decided to show him a vision. He showed him the face of Satan. And what does Satan look like? Well, the curious thing is, from a theological standpoint, Satan has two faces. our past, don't we? Prison has made you something of a philosopher, Randall. A man cannot be free, Francis, until he erases his mistakes. Freighter, you're on a train loaded with explosives, full of Royal Canadian Mounted Policemen, and you're headed toward a nuclear disaster. And you avert that disaster. How does that make you feel? Feel? Feel. Fine. Cut. Constable, I'd like you to imagine a spotlight, a big spotlight, 72,000 watts of a spotlight, and it is focused on you. You are the center of a media frenzy which we are trying to capitalize on. Take a look at these people. The Constable Fraser. You're already on their television sets and on the covers of their magazines, but they want more. They want your inner soul. So let's think Roseanne. Show them your scars. 
With respect, ma'am, <clears throat> I thought it was our unstated protocol to avoid the appearance of currying favor with media. We sold out to Disney, Fraser. That is about as curried as it gets. Now, you're gonna have to trust me on this. I am an RCMP media relations expert, and I'd like us to focus on the details. I want you to tell us how you got from the horse car to the engine room. Ah, well, um, <clears throat> I followed Inspector Thatcher up the ladder. We then ran along the top of the train. Inspector Thatcher stopped, turned. We engaged in a conversation that led to us discovering ourselves as... Ah, uh, Constable. <laughs> that was terrific, Constable. Marked improvement. But could I have a quick word with you? Fraser, our, um, what would be the word for it? Contact. Contact, yes, that's a good word. Our contact, in my opinion, is not something that is needing to be publicly aired. Since it had no bearing on the outcome of the event, I agree. Uh, furthermore, sir, I followed your instructions and I've tried to uh, erase the contact from my memory. You have? Yes. And have you succeeded? We were just sorry to interrupt, but I have a coffee, and I also have the Java, and holy moly, I've forgotten the sweetener. If you could give me a couple ticks, I'll be right back. Constable, if I could ask you just I'm one I'm sorry, question. I forgot the sweetener. Constable, I have no comment, question. no comment at all. Excuse me, please. Excuse yeah, me. Who are you with? Who am I with? I'm with me, Ray Vecchio, the guy who saved Illinois. Who are you with? Are you the detective who was on the train? I just wasn't on the train, baby. I stopped the train. Uh, can I please just a few words? Sure. Thank you. Uh, are you rolling? Rolling. I'm standing now with somebody who is actually on the train, Detective Vecchio. Answer me just one question. Go ahead. What's the Mountie like? Detective Vecchio? Uh, You're not talking? No. Like, you're really not talking? That's right, Frazier. I'm really not talking. Just so I can be really clear in my own mind, Ray, other than telling me that you're not talking, you are, in fact, not talking. That's about the size of it. I see. Is there something I should know? You should. Well, this thing that I should know, do you think you could perhaps provide me with a hint as to what it might be? Oh, I see. Well, um... I suppose I should probably just, uh... Get out of my car. Understood. Ah, thanks, Ray. box I'm full of hope and all I get is a choice between dill pickles and Asiago cheese. It's 
like having your knees cut out from under you. He's feeling slighted, not without justification. I mean, after all, if you go to extreme lengths and your efforts are ignored, it only makes a guy feel like... this out. We put that guy behind bars. He's ready to go to trial. Now I walk into that room today and this little bouncy reporter comes up to me and I'm thinking, all right, Ray, here's your chance. Here's a little reward for putting yourself in harm's way one more time. And what's the first question she asked me? So what's the Mountie like? <laughs> so what's the Mountie like? He's Superman, all right? What do you expect me to say? He's a moron? He dresses up in that damn red suit every single day of his life like a signpost. Come on, Ray, that's not fair. I don't wear it all the time. The truth is there are times I wish I didn't have to wear it. I mean, the thing itches. It itches 365 days of the year. Unless, of course, it's a leap year, in which case it itches for 366 days. But the point is, I don't wear it intentionally. It's part of my obligations. We are not talking about clothes here, Frazier, okay? We're talking about you, the most irritating man in the world. Ray, I know I irritate you, but you have to believe me. I'm not trying to irritate you. It's not part of some sort of master plan. You know, the fact of the matter is, I often try to imagine how you would handle a given situation. I mean, just the other day, for instance, I saw this woman who was in a wheelchair, and she was having difficulty with a set of doors. And so I was just about to help her, when all of a sudden I have your voice in my head. Hey, Fraser, what the hell's wrong with you? You gotta help every cripple in the greater Chicago area. I mean, what the hell you think they have those handicap buttons for? So they can feel good about themselves. So they can do something on their own without some do-gooder's help. But no, what do you do? You help her through anyway. You wheel her out and you help her into a cab. Which promptly ran over my foot. But the point of the anecdote is this, that while I was helping her, I knew that you would be irritated with me. And I'm sorry, but I seem... I seem to be powerless to prevent that. I don't know. I don't know if it's some sort of flaw in my upbringing or some genetic abnormality or perhaps it's just some aberrant property in the talk to you the water system. Don't put this on the water, Frazier. This is a conscious thing that you do, okay? You cover everything up. You squash it down. It's like that time with Frobisher when that guy counter, he stabbed you in the shoulder. Geiger. What? The man's name was Geiger. His name is Geiger Counter? No, just Geiger, no counter, and he stabbed me in the leg. Leg, shoulder, what difference does it make? Well, Ray, when you're the one being stabbed, the difference is remarkable. The point is, Frazier, he stabbed you, and were you angry? I was in pain. We are talking about anger here, Frazier, a human emotion. Are you human? Because if you are, human beings feel things, okay? They feel anger, they feel love, they feel lust and fear. And sometimes, and I know you don't want to hear this, sometimes they even cry. Hey. Frazier?
That's a fine animal you have. 50% wolf, if I'm not mistaken. What have you done to him? He's all right. He'll wake up soon. Please, answer the question. Perhaps you're missing a full appreciation of your situation. You're tied up. This is a gun. Ergo, you are my prisoner. So if I ask a question, I expect an answer without hesitation. Now, where did you get the animal? It's rather a long story. I have time. I've forgotten most of it. Well, that's unfortunate. It's an interesting story. And bears repeating. Mid-May, 212 miles northwest of Whitehorse in the Yukon Territories. Is, wait, is that territories or territory? Territory. Thank you. I crave accuracy. So you'd been dispatched to track down big game poachers that were coming across the border from Alaska. Despite your training, you could not have foreseen that the poachers would convert a mine shaft into a bear trap. You have no idea how long you lay there. When you came to, you discovered you were not alone. Well, your first thought was to save the animal. That's admirable. <clears throat> but not without certain drawbacks. When you came to, you were alone without any visible means of escape. So you sat down to collect your thoughts. But how could you have thought that the animal would be so grateful as to come back and try and repay the favor? You were knocked out for a third time. But despite the gaff, a bond was formed and you've been together ever since. You're wondering, of course, how I know the details of this story. Suffice to say, I know many things. And it's no accident that you were on board that train. Can you guess who I am now? Yes, I think I can. Your name would be Francis Bolt. You were born in Oregon in 1949. 1950. 1950. You are a theoretical mathematician by training and a recluse by choice. You have a younger brother named Randall. Who you arrested. That was a mistake. He broke the law. I would arrest him again in a heartbeat. You would. Well, let's see what your friend has to say about that, shall we? Detective Vecchio, I'd like it if you could talk your friend over there into apologizing. <clears throat> we gotta look, pal, because I'm not talking to him. My brother's problem is the same problem that plagues all geniuses. <coughs> <coughs> Can't get a date. You are a wiseacre, detective. Whereas I am a mathematician. I look for symmetry, for order within chaos. Let us take the charter train, coded 56023, for example. You are here to account for your part in thwarting my plan. <laughs> rigorous in its detail and as a wise man once said 
God is in the details. So, it is to God that you both now will answer. Oh, by the way, have either of you ever worn a Mexican poncho? In the matter of the state of Illinois versus Randall K. Bolt, the accused is herein charged with two counts of murder in the first degree, one count of attempted murder, one count of possession of a controlled or illegal substance. Thank you. Can you raise your arms, please? Where is he? I don't know. We are getting down to the wire here, Inspector. One count of possession and transportation of explosives with intent to commit a felony. One count of grand theft. No, Mr. Mustafi, it's not dangerous. I just want you to knock on Constable Fraser's door. One count of hijacking, 32 counts of assault, and one count of advocacy of the overthrow of the government of the United States of America by force or violence. Do you understand these charges? Uh, could you, uh, could you like repeat those just so they're real clear in my head? We're in the uh, middle of openings, for God's sake. All right, Lieutenant, I appreciate it. Let it be duly noted that the defense waives its right to an opening statement. The state will call its first witness, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Constable Benton Fraser. Your Honor. <clears throat> that, that thing, that, that phone we, we, we tried, ultimately we, we couldn't get a hold. Is there a problem, Miss Sheldrake? It would appear, Your Honor, that Constable Fraser has been delayed. Perhaps I could maybe... Perhaps you could what? We barely got our toes in the pond, and you've lost your first witness. This does not inspire confidence on the bench, Counselor. I understand that, Your Honor. However, I had anticipated that this witness's testimony would cover the bulk of... You should invest in a calendar, Counselor. You'd be surprised how much time you've had to prepare for this case. I'm aware of the time I've had to prepare. If... Your witness does not appear. My witness is here, Your Honor. So glad you could join us, Constable Fraser. This trial was about to go south. You mind taking the stand? Uh, not at all, Your Honor, but I'm not sure it would benefit the court. Are you pleading the fifth, son? Is that what you're doing? Uh, no, Your Honor, but I don't think that my taking the stand uh, would benefit this trial. I think what he's trying to say, Your Honor, is that now might be a good time for a short recess. Who the hell are you? Detective Ray Vecchio, Chicago PD. Are you two joined at the hip? In her manner of speaking, yes. I think what the detective is suggesting, Your Honor, is that perhaps now is a... Uh, well, perhaps Your Honor would feel the urge to say, I don't know, uh, step out. Are you telling me I have to go to the bathroom? Well, that's an idea. And perhaps uh, other members of the jury would feel the need to, re to relieve themselves. As a matter of fact, one does now. Do you two suffer from Tourette's? Uh, not, not that we're aware. Then what's with the ticks? 
Now, unless you want to get hit with a contempt charge, you'd better have a good reason why you're not sitting in that box right now. Excuse me, but uh, he does have a reason, Your Honor. Who the hell are you? A friend of justice. What the hell is going on here? May I remove this poncho? We have 20 in the building. Communications? Still nothing. The hard lines have been severed. Where are the response teams? They'll be here in five. All right, until they get here, we're going to... Ford! Good morning, Glory. I need you to bring something to me. Yes, and that something would be a helicopter. Do you, do you happen to have a, a Bell Star? That would be nice, wouldn't it? A bell star? <laughs> I mean, after all, I've been kind enough to tear out most of this building for you, so the least you can do for me, I think, is get that chopper on the roof within 45 minutes. And if you're wondering about my destination, it's none of your beeswax, nosy Parkers. What's a nosy Parker? Oh, by the way, I am sending you a liaison in the person of Inspector Thatcher of the RCMP. We have another one. Get the woman up here. What's the count? 19 inside. That includes Judge Brock, the 12 jurors, Detective Vecchio, and the Mountie. Before we proceed, are there any final instructions from the bench? <laughs> well, what do you know? The bench isn't talking. <laughs> Randall! Fifteen minutes, Randall. I'll be there. Randall, we leave in fifteen minutes. End of sentence. Francis! I am standing here in front of a jury of my peers, for God's sake. When you use that tone of voice, I hear mom. And when I hear mom, I feel humiliated. This is not a point for debate, Randall. I will not have you ruin this plan the way you ruined my plan for the train. Now, you can have all the spotlight your ego demands. I realize you're not talking to me, but I thought I'd take the liberty of posing the question anyway. Why would you order a helicopter to arrive in 45 minutes if you intend to depart in 15? With or without you, end of discussion. Wake up, America! The enemy is among us! Two men stand before you accused of treason. Their co-conspirator is no less than the American so-called government, which daily denies our rights enshrined in the Constitution. Fathers of Confederation, sound the alarm! The same alarm sounded on April 18, 1775, by a simple silversmith named Paul Revere. This live feed is coming to you from the state courthouse in the heart of Chicago, where the Jenkins standoff... ...continues where he left off. Randall Bolt on trial for acts of terrorism and murder. Change has struck... it. Again, we have no idea at this time... Change what it back. Battle up with one... What the hell is that signal coming from? 
I don't know. Must be court TV. Well, cut the signal. We'll go to full blackout on this one. What kind of weaponry have they got? Semi-automatics, assault rifles, handguns. How'd they get it through? They put one of their own on security. A circuit box is in the building. Well, cut the cable. Blow the dish. I don't care what you do. Stop the signal. Come here. Okay, darling, the bomb. Is it real? Did you just call me darling? I have no idea. Is the bomb real? Can we afford to assume otherwise? Smart girl. Okay, bring in the teams. Let's go, man. Right. Until he finally reached Concord, where he sounded his alarm. Objection, if I may. Your tract contains certain inaccuracies. And Revere was unquestionably a patriot, but he did not make that right alone, nor did he reach Concord. Oh, he didn't, did he, smarty pants? No, he didn't. Revere, a doctor named Prescott, and a man named Dawes set out together from Lexington. En route, Dawes and Revere were detained by the British. So who did get to Concord? Dr. Prescott, who's been largely ignored by history, in part because of the distortions in Longfellow's poems. Distortions, I might add, that you were perpetuating in this courtroom. Objection! Frazier, if you want to get us killed, why don't you just use the bombs? I'm glad to see you're talking to me again, Ray. Does the bench sustain? Yes, it does. Now, furthermore, your assertion that he was a simple silversmith. Randall, 15 minutes. Ah! The jury will now retire to deliberate the verdict on you, Huskies. And the judge will be put out into the street with the rest of the trash. The heart monitors I've attached to your chests are now active. If your combined heart rate exceeds 200, it's bye-bye, boys. Oh, dear. We have 19 inside, 12 of them non-combatants. Now, they are requesting helicopter dust-off. Let's take a look at the big board. Can you get me a list of all the trials that were on the slate today? Come. Good. All right. Now, three wires. Red, white, blue. Now, if I remember correctly, it was the Continental Congress of 1872 that spelled out the meaning of the colors in the seal. And red was meant to stand for hardiness and courage. Uh, white was meant to stand for purity and innocence. And blue was meant to stand for vigilance and justice, all of which no terrorist would object to. So where does that leave us? In the middle of a courtroom, strapped to a bomb, waiting to blow up. Where do you think it leaves us? Ray, Ray, don't get excited. Look, we are going to die. You want me to pretend that I'm happy about it? Ray, if you're bitten by a rattlesnake, the safest course of action is to lower your metabolic rate. This is not a rattlesnake. This is plastic explosives. But the same principle should apply. Oh, you should listen to yourself sometime. You sound like a robot. Ray, just calm down. Don't tell me to calm down, okay? I'm looking at judgment day here, all right? Don't tell me to calm down. Ray, if we just work together... Can you honestly say that you are calm right now? No, no, I'm... I'm uh... What? Well, I'm concerned. Concerned, that's it? You don't feel anger? You're not angry? No, not exactly, no. I... Will you just admit that you're a human being just once in your life? Can please, you admit that please, you're a human please. being? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Dropping my heart rate. In the middle of an argument? Mm -hmm. Don't let me stop you. I'm going to kill you. That's very possible. Mm -hmm. There. I've never hated you, Ray. 
have envied you, maybe. Envied me? I'm not proud of it, but you have a kind of freedom I wish I had. Sort of existential honesty. Are you saying I'm honest? In your heart, yes. Courtroom one, ongoing manslaughter, two fraud, first day, three a series of misdemeanors. What's the fraud? Rooftop ETA is 1305. Blue team will be in readiness in staging area A. White team will be in like readiness at staging area C. On my go, we move. Any questions? Yes. Excuse me. I see you. I know this man. He won't leave anything to chance. He'll have anticipated this. If you say Yeah, I appreciate your thoughts, darling. I really do. But let's get something straight. This isn't a train. You're on my turf now. He called me darling again. The clock is ticking, Vern. Time is money. Frazier, wake up. Are you calm? Yes, I'm calm. You sure you're calm? I said I'm calm. Now don't get me aggravated. All right, all right, all right. What was blue again? Blue stood for vigilance and justice. Justice? Mm hmm. We're in a justice building. That's it. Benny, calm down. No, no, you got it. I said calm no, down. No, Ray, you calm figured it. Calm down. Hmm. Hey, calm? Yes. So, it's blue. Yeah, blue, maybe. Okay, well, let's go with blue. No, you go with blue. Why don't you go with blue? Well, because you're better at this. Well, maybe we should both go with blue. Okay. Okay. All right, one, two, three. All right, let's make ready. something 
I don't know, elegant about the electric chair. <laughs> Look closely, and you will see that our man is wired for sound. It's for real. You have 14 minutes to get me that chopper. Response team, stand down. If you fail, first I'll do the judge, then I'll do the jury. Where the hell are they? They should be here. Unless the helicopter was a diversion. We have movement on the roof. Fraser. Hold this, will you? Why are we carrying around our own bomb with us? It might come in handy. The hell is he doing? Semaphore. Hey, Fraser, if you're gonna jump, jump. Just don't stand there waving your arms around. No, I'm not gonna jump, Ray. It's semaphore. In the absence of a phone, it's the best we can do. What did she say? She called me a moron. She's a very perceptive woman. What are you saying? What are you telling him? Hey! Darling, talk to me. Oh! Ray, tell me about the Gambello case. Big scale fraud, $30 million in U.S. bear bonds like cash in hand. Well, those bonds are in this building. Their evidence is part of that trial. So the helicopter was a diversion. They'll grab the bonds and head out where? Well, the sewers probably. Then they'll detonate from a safe distance. Thank you, cousin. Your reward is nigh. Stephen Baker. Oh. Hello. You don't know me. My name's Cooper. I'm a friend of Benton's. Benton is in trouble. He specifically asked for you, Deefen Baker. Do you understand? Oh. Easy. Easy. Oh. 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 You must have jammed him. Now what? I have an idea, but you're not going to like it. You got to be kidding me. I told you you wouldn't like it. Who the hell is that? Uh oh. What? Oh, it's nothing. It's just a little friction. Oh dear. What? Well, it, it would appear. Yep. I'm on fire, Ray. Oh, well. At least the whole day is just over right off. Well, that was lucky. Well, not lucky exactly, Ray. There's usually a puddle at the bottom of the mountain. No, there isn't. Well, as a rule, yes, actually, there is. You see the condensation. Shut up. Where's the chopper? And a boundary marker three miles out. 
Sure. Get the teams back to full readiness. Sure. Oh, sorry about that, Cousins, but it makes the math easier. Yep, no long division. And... It scares me. I think that I do. Yeah, well, that's probably why you and I have been such close. All right, all right. Don't get all mushy on me. Gentlemen, you have one choice. You can give us what we want, or we blow the building. You are not going to blow the building. You are not a martyr. You're just a self-centered little creep who wants to get his face in the paper. Are you talking about me, Ray? Indirectly. You are wrong about this. the modern version of what was that guy's name again dr prescott that's right i'm a modern version of dr prescott no you're not you're not randall and neither am i what do you say see the world for what it is randall we're not patriots we're thieves uncommon but thieves nonetheless and once again you're on the verge of ruining a perfect plan you seem to have hit a nerve, Ray. Detective, there are 12 innocent people in jeopardy. Is it worth the risk? All we want are the bonds. That's right! Are you kidding me? That's all that they wanted? Why didn't they say so in the first place? Take them! For God's sakes, what are you doing? That's not ours. I know, it's theirs. It's not theirs. That money belongs to someone else. Oh, did they say bonds? I thought they said bombs. Well, that's very clever, Ray. Wait, wait, Ma. Open the bag. Where's our money? Nice dog, you want a bone? Got a nice bone for you right here. Come on. the bag. Well, why don't you grab it? Don't you trust me, Randall? You trust me? Well, let's both grab the bag. Oh! Oh! You guys still want to blow the building? This kind of reminds you of a bear trap? <laughs> Can we go now? Oh, shut up, Randall. <laughs> Press sound. 
Who needs it? Not us. No, nope, not us. Nope. God, I love this city. You know, sometimes you have to be a conduit and let the world come to you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You're standing there flailing your arms around like you're daffy. What do you think? I just cut off the boat? Which boat? Don't try to deflect this. Deflect what? You know what I'm talking about. Well, no, Ray. Actually, I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> After all that we've been through, haven't you learned anything? In what sense? Ugh, you're the most irritating man in the world. Like, define irritating. Well, no, you looked it up, Mr. Encyclopedia. Well, I think you mean Mr. Dictionary, though. Your own. 